Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neuroscience, and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino. I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher, and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neuroscience, and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes, and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today, let's talk about neuropsychological assessment. As you probably know, neuropsychological assessment is one major activity that clinical neuropsychologists have, because it's through the process of neuropsychological assessment that we can understand which neurocognitive domain or which neurocognitive process may be damaged. But before we get further on this, first let's see the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the Fundamentals of Human Neuropsychology. The third is the Neuropsychology Handbook. The fourth is the Handbook of Clinical Neuropsychology, second edition. The fifth is the Neuropsychological Assessment. And the sixth is the Clinical Neuropsychology. So, now let's take a brief look on Neuropsychological Assessment. Neuropsychological assessment may be defined as the clinical science that is dedicated to the study of the behavioral expression of brain functions or end dysfunctions. Neuropsychological assessment is a performance based method to assess neurocognitive functioning. The application of performance based assessments helps clinical observations and self reports of several or various neurocognitive skills. What I'm saying about neurocognitive skills, I'm talking about memory, attention, speed of processing, reasoning, judgment, problem solving, which is including executive functions, spatial and language functions, and there are other functions that were described in previous videos. So, neuropsychological assessment helps to estimate the existence of neurocognitive impairments, it assesses its intensity, it helps to define its characteristics, and help to establish appropriate therapeutic approaches. Also, neuropsychological assessment helps to diagnose information for detection of brain impairments or other traumatic conditions. It helps differential diagnosis versus other psychopathologies. It helps in the measurement on the neurofunctional potential and helps clinical neuropsychologists to establish a course and development of brain impairments. It also, the neuropsychological assessment helps the measurement of the recovery of the functioning. So, it has clinical implications in the measurement of the treatment responses, which have some implications to neuropsychological rehabilitation. So, now I will describe to you how usually the neuropsychological assessment process tends to unfold, okay? First, there is an assessment request. Second, there is a study of the clinical process and clinical history. Third, there is an interview with the patient and family or companion, if is required. Fourth, there is a selection of the assessment instruments or the measures that the clinical neuropsychologists need to use to assess individuals' functioning. So, here I'm talking about cognitive screening neuropsychological batteries or specific tests to other symptomatological conditions. Fifth, there is an application of the chosen assessment instruments and typically uh, the neuropsychological assessment process tends to end with a neuropsychological report where the clinical neuropsychologist describes the results from the neuropsychological process. Typically, this report must have some descriptions of the neuropsychological functioning, of the psychopathological conditions that were found in this process, and typically it has some guidelines to neuropsychological rehabilitation, but we will look to this in further videos. So now let's take a brief look on the summary. Neuropsychological assessment may be described as the clinical science that is dedicated to the study of behavioral expression of brain functions. 
Neuropsychological assessment typically requires neurocognitive and behavioral assessment with several and differential tasks. It also helps in the differential diagnosis. And also it has clear implications to the neuropsychological rehabilitation program, which is typically proposed by the clinical neuropsychologist if some neuropsychological impairment was described. So, this is just an introductory video to neuropsychological assessment. In the future, we will take a more in-depth look in this process, okay? So, stay tuned! Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme if you want to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your mind and to express your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all the things that you saw here. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neuroscience and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neuroscience and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So today, let's talk about neuropsychological rehabilitation. So here, I will describe the major issues that a clinical neuropsychology must know to perform or to develop a rehabilitation program focused on the specific needs and on the specific impairments of a specific patient. But first, let's see the manuals that I recommend for you today. The first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology. The third is the Neuropsychology Handbook. The fourth is the Handbook of Clinical Neuropsychology. The sixth is the Neuropsychological Assessment. And the sixth is the Clinical Neuropsychology. So, now let's take a brief look on Neuropsychological Rehabilitation. So, Neuropsychological Rehabilitation is a biopsychosocial treatment that involves the patient, their families, caregivers and the environment. It aims to improve the quality of life of patients, providing them with the greatest possible autonomy. It intervenes in the subject's cognitive deficits, also paying attention to physical, behavioral and social changes. It is also focused on the environment in which they live, subjective factors and their biography, in order to reintegrate the subject into their social and occupational environment. The integration of the patient in a neuropsychological rehabilitation program depends on medical evaluation and on the neuropsychological assessment, which was described in the previous video. So, based on the results of the neuropsychological assessment, a neuropsychological rehabilitation plan or program typically adapted to each patient tends to be prepared. So, in the neuropsychological assessment report, clinical neuropsychologists tend to give some proposals about a plan or a program that tends to match the neurocognitive functioning of the patient. So, it is important to differentiate cognitive rehabilitation versus neuropsychological rehabilitation. Cognitive rehabilitation aims to enable patients and families to live with, deal with, work around or reduce or overcome cognitive impairments resulting from neurological damage. So, it is focused primarily on improving cognitive functions through cognitive training. But, neuropsychological rehabilitation is a little bit different. 
because in adding to the focus on cognitive deficits, it also aims to treat behavioral and emotional changes, improving the patient quality of life, encompassing the family and the environment. So, neuropsychological rehabilitation tends to encompass cognitive rehabilitation because neuropsychological rehabilitation tends to be more wider in its approach, okay? Because it focuses not only in the cognitive or neurocognitive deficits, but also focuses on the behavioral and emotional changes that the patients tend to manifest based on neurological damage. So, how can we rehabilitate a patient like this? Typically, there is a neural replacement which implies the total loss of function and the replacement tend to reduce the deterioration in their link functioning. So we tend to replace one function by other. So there is another form of rehabilitate which tend to be focused on activation or stimulation. If we have a damaged area in the brain, we tend to stimulate and activate this area and improve the neurocognitive functioning. So there is another form which is the integration which is working with several other models. One is the ecological model, which the person tends to engage in several tasks, typically associated with the daily task, with the daily functioning of the person, that tend to stimulate the brain areas that are damaged. And the other form is the restitution, which aims to reorganize through training the conserved areas that assume part of the functioning. So these conserved areas tend to pull to themselves other functions and in this way we tend to improve the neurocognitive functioning. So all the principles that I'm saying here can be described as cognitive training, cognitive stimulation or neurocognitive rehabilitation. So different persons need to different areas of the neuropsychological rehabilitation. It all depends on the area that is damaged. So now let's see the summary and the key points. Neuropsychological rehabilitation is a neurobiopsychological treatment because it encompasses several areas of the person. It is based on the neuropsychological assessment and is focused primarily on neurocognitive deficits and functionality. But as we saw previously, a neuropsychological rehabilitation tends also to encompass ecological models based on the daily functioning of the person, which also encompasses emotional and behavioral tasks. Several areas that are encompassed by the neuropsychological rehabilitation tend to be described as cognitive training, cognitive stimulation and neurocognitive rehabilitation. So, this is the first video that I'm doing about neuropsychological rehabilitation. But in the future, we have a lot to talk about this, okay? So, stay tuned. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme if you want to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your mind and to express your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all the things that you saw here. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!